Hi, in this video, we're going to go over some programming concepts, and these concepts are the same in, in any language that, you, that you're that you working on or, or studying. And it's um, we're going to we're going to learn a program by uh, starting with a problem and then breaking that down. So we want to do a couple of things here is break the problem down into a few pieces, and then we're going to uh, figure out how to do this in the language. And to me, the best way to learn how to program is to try to solve a problem. Um, you can, there are a lot of things out there on for loops and next statements and all this other stuff that you would use. But if you really try to solve a problem, that's when you learn how to program. So that's what we're going to do today. And, uh, I was helping my daughter with a science project and what she needed to do was figure out pi. And so what that is, is if you, if you draw a line from here to here in a circle and you measured that, uh, you could find out the circumference of the circle or how big the circle is. And uh, you can uh, you can do this and everybody knows pi is you know 3.14, but it really goes on forever. And there are a lot of different formulas to do this, but what we needed to do was calculate that to a few digits uh, more than you can get in a calculator. So what we're gonna start with is how do we how do we solve this problem in PHP? And so let's start with our standard, we'll grab a button here. Um, and we'll have the button start our, our calculation and let's grab a label or two. Okay. So let's put these out there now, um, to calculate pi, the funny thing is, is it's actually a repeating formula. And so, um, let me, let me make a note here. So if we just put some text in here, everybody knows this is three, three, one, four something, but to actually calculate that it's pi equals four times, uh, and this is an older formula, but it's simple. So we're going to use it one minus, and then it's uh, one third plus one fifth minus one seventh. And this goes on and on and on forever. Um, and so if we look for patterns here, which will help us in programming, what we're going to see uh, would be a few things. One is the denominator here goes up by two uh, every decimal plate that we calculate pi to. So if we did it to one decimal place, we'd use a third. Two decimal places, we would use, you know, this part of the formula. Three, it goes on and on and on. But the denominator goes up by two every time. The second thing that we're going to note is that we start out with a minus for the first decimal place and then a plus for the second and then a minus, and this keeps looping. So if it's an odd number, we have to subtract it. If it's an even number, we have to add it. So let's go ahead and, um, and start building this out. We're going to start by building a few variables. So um, what we need, first of all, would be the number of decimal places that we want to calculate this to. Let's say we're going to do a million. So that's a hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand million. And then um, we need uh, a, a variable for the denominator. And we covered variables in the last video. Can never spell. And we're going to start out with this being equal to one. And then we need something to actually hold the pi calculation that we're doing. And we're going to start out with one here as well. Um, so now what we need to do, uh, since we have our formula down here, is uh, we need to loop through this and actually start doing some of the math. And so we're going to loop through this uh, a million times uh, because this is the number of decimals that we want to calculate to. So um, to, to do this looping, right, we're going to do, we're going to do uh, one minus uh, one divided by three. Uh, then we're going to do the one fifth. And this looping action is how we actually calculate this. So we're going to start out with a for loop. So for us to do something repetitively, in computer terminology, this is this, this is called a for statement. And we're going to have a variable for this. Remember the dollar sign for the variable within uh, PHP. 
and we're going to start with one. Let's, I'm going to call this I since we're iterating through here and one. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to say if I, I can type here, is less than the decimal places. So we're going to keep doing this loop as long as this iteration here is less than our decimal places. Otherwise, if we don't put this section in here, then it would go on forever. And you're, 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 you're going to hear your fan and your computer heating up and going nuts. Um, and then what we're going to do is um, if I is less than the number of decimal places, uh, then we're going to add 1 to I for the next loop. Now, in our last video, we covered that you could do this I is equal to um, I plus 1, but there's a shorthand way to do that, and we're going to use that shorthand way here. So we're going to add this plus here. And what we've done is we've put this whole iteration here in parentheses. So we've said, all right, we have a variable. It's equal to 1. As long as... Uh, it is less than the decimal places. We're going to do something. And then after we've done something, go ahead and add 1 to i. And so this is uh, the little syntax we use for that. Now what we want to do would be add some brackets. And these are your curly brackets on your keyboard, probably next to p. Um, and in this case, let's just say that uh, label 1, let's test this out. We don't do this a million times. Let's do it 10 times. So to test this for loop, let's say label 1. Oh, we have to start with this. We'll go into that later, why we do that. But for now, let's just do it. And we're going to say caption is equal to I. And we'll put the semicolon there. So if we run this, probably going to have to save it. Yes, I do. So desktop, we're going to call this pi. And this is pi. Okay, so let's open up our web page here. Okay, so when we click on this, um, it says equal to i. And that's because we didn't put the dollar sign on there. Let's do this again. Okay, and so it went to 9. Now, why did it go to 9? Um, so what happened here is it loops through this, it started with 1, and then the last time it, it uh, when it got to 9, it printed out our caption. After it printed out our caption, then it added 1, and we didn't have another print statement. So it's important to understand kind of what's, help, what's going on in this looping and when we add um, uh, something to the variable, right? So if you're expecting 10, realize that, uh, that we only printed 9 there. So now what, we've, what we need to do is, uh, as we're looping through this, uh, we're going to start to incorporate the formula. And the first thing that we need to, to do, again, we have this action down here, is we have two different things that we need to do. We need to add 2 to the denominator every time, and then we need to change up whether this is a negative or a plus. And so what we're going to do is check to see if we're at an even number, we add a plus, and if we're at a negative number, we're going to add a minus. So the first concept here is this for loop. The next concept is if, and this is important. We use it every day. If you do this, then this will happen, and that's what we're telling the computer. So let's go ahead and comment this out. So what we're going to say is that um, if, and we're going to use our iterator. Our iterator is counting for us. And if our iterator, uh, and we've never used this before, but if we said um, divided by 2 is equal to 0, then, and we're going to put more of these curly brackets. So we always use curly brackets to, to tell our code, you know, if this happens, execute this code between these curly bra bra braces. And that's what we're doing here. And that's what we did in the for loop. Now, if we said that if i is divided by 2 is equal to 0, you know, we may be okay here. Um, but the thing is, we have an even and an odd. And so where this is where you actually do the math to divide by something, what we want is the remainder. Because if i is uh, 
nine hundred ninety nine thousand divided by two, you know that that really doesn't tell us anything. So we need to know if, if there's a remainder or not. And so to do that um, in PHP, we use the percent sign. And so now what we're saying is, give me the remainder of this number divided by two. And if it's zero, that means that this is a even number. And if it's not, then it's an odd number. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is write in code just what we're saying. If it's even, do this. If it's not even, then do this. And we can say that if it's not even, then we know it's odd. So we can call that else. We could put another if statement in there if we wanted to. And you can have a loop of if statements. But, um, and you can have you know hundreds of, of loops in there. The distinction is, if we put another loop statement in there, we're doing another calculation. Um, if we put an else statement in there, then we don't have to do the calculation. And we're only just saving CPU cycles. So we're, we're making it so that the computer didn't have to do anything else. So if we wanted to write this out, we could say, divided by two. And you could say, if it's not equal to zero, right, then do something. So we could put this in our other code, but again, I'm trying to just be a little bit more efficient here. So now we have a four loop and we have an if loop. And we also have an else statement. Else statement, not an else statement, but an else statement. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, the first part of this problem that we're talking about is increasing the denominator by two with each iteration. So let's do that. Um, so let's go ahead and, and create another line here. And we're gonna say denominator is equal to the denominator plus two. And you remember, we've done this before. That says add one. So we could put a couple of those statements in there, but uh, we're just going to do it this way. And so we need to do the same thing uh, down here. Right. So regardless of whether there's a remainder or not, whether it's even or odd, doesn't matter for this part of the problem. So we're going to go ahead and add in two to the denominator every time. Right, uh, let's go down to our comments. So every time we have to add two, the even or odd part comes in um, deciding whether this is, whether we need to subtract something or add something. So let's go ahead and add this in. Now in this part, what we're saying is that this is even. And you always wanna comment your code so that when you forget you can come back or somebody else sees it, they can, uh, you can see what you're, you're thinking there. So we're going to add the pi calculation. And we're gonna make the, we're gonna take the old pi calculation with one digit less than this and we're going to add it and we're gonna update it with our other denominator here. And if we look, um, this is this part right here. Let me go ahead and just add this. Let me copy and paste real quick. So this is the first key part to our formula. There are actually two sections here. Uh, if it's an even number, this right here, one divided by the denominator, right? That is the same as this right here. And the plus is if it's even, right? And so our next statement, is going to be the same thing um, down here. Let's do this. But the difference is we need to subtract it. And so we're adding two to the denominator every time. If it's an odd, if it's an even digit, we're gonna add this calculation. If it's an odd digit, we're going to subtract it. And the main thing here isn't the denominator and all this other stuff. The main thing is that we're doing a loop um, 10 times for now. We're gonna increase that to a million or so. And we're learning the if statement. So if this is true, 
or if this is false. These are the key things that we want to learn um, in the else statement right here. So now that we have our, our calculation, uh, what we need to do is um, do this piece right here. Uh, so we need to, to add this other little section. Again, the math here isn't important more so than the, the logic. And I think this is going to go right in here. Let's clean this up. Okay, so let's add in our next stuff. So let's say pi and it's four times the pi calculation, the which is all the denominator stuff that we've been adding. Okay, and now that we have this. Let's see, I've got a mistake here, pi underscore calc. May have taken this out of cont, put it in the wrong spot. Let's put it right in here. There we go. What happened was I, I took it out of the function, so it wouldn't work if we were pressing the button. And uh, you got to be careful of these brackets here. But now what we want it to do is um, we want the caption to show our calculation. And so we just want to put pi calc. Okay, let's take the comments out here. And let's see where we are. Ah, now it's 3.04, not 3.14. So when we go back here, uh, right now we're doing this. We're not we're not doing enough of the calculation to get accurate. So let's say we add in a couple zeros. 3.14. So that's made the the difference there. Is that you have to calculate it to enough decimal places. So if this is a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Million. Let's go ahead and run this to million decimal places. Boy, this little thing comes up all the time. There we go. Now we're getting some digits. So again, what we've done, uh, we've created three, three variables. We created a for loop that loops um, to however many number of decimal places we have. We created that variable. We told it as long as it's less than so that we don't have an infinite loop. We increment our variable. All this is important, otherwise you get an infinite loop and your computer just keeps going. And then we've added if statements. So if uh, you know we divide this number by two and there's no remainder, it's even. And if it's not even, we know it's odd. So we just use an else statement. And uh, when uh, you know when you're doing these if else, uh, if it's true, it's going to execute this code between these two brackets. And with our else statement, if it's not true, it's false. And so it's going to ex execute this code. We updated the calculation, and then we updated our label. So I wanted to give you another way to, to view programming on why you need these loops, why you need if, stel if statements, and how you can solve a larger problem. So take care, and we'll see you in the next video.